And now for your weekly dose of metal. Here are your hosts, Morgan Danielle and Luco Blaze on the Metal Experience. And we just heard Woe to the Earth with the song Let's Do This. That was the band pick that's on tonight. I am Luco Blaze with Morgan Danielle. We are broadcasting out of Fitz's Spare Keys. Is that what it's called now? Yes. I, I'll never remember that. We're broadcasting out of Spitz's, Fitz's Spare Keys in Elmhurst. Don't. <laughs> and tonight we have on with us The Survivalist. What's going on, guys? What's up, man? Hey. And, uh... 
why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? What you do in the band? If anyone's missing, let's go. Let's start from there. Let's start there. Okay, first let me introduce our missing drummer for tonight. <laughs> All right. Uh, he couldn't make it. Uh, his name's Ryan Mooney, and uh, we miss you, Ryan. We wish you were here. Not really. It's 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 cool. <laughs> go ahead, keep it work. Don't listen to him. Uh, I'm Dan. I play guitar. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm the lead vocalist. My name's Corey. I play guitar as well. Woo! Well, thank you guys for no driving. No bassist? Yeah, see, that's a that's an ongoing struggle. We're looking. Yeah. <laughs> looking for a bassist. Yeah. So if you are listening to this and you live in the racing Southeast Kenosha area, Wisconsin. yeah, <laughs> give us a call. All right. All right. Sweet. And uh, thank whew. you for driving all that way, yeah. by the way. So you guys this came is fucking in. awesome. Yeah, sure thing. We got some mixed. W- where are you guys all from? We're from Racine. Uh, we're yeah. from Racine. We were born. Uh, me and Dan were both born in Illinois. And then, okay, uh, you mean from from like where we were born? <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. from <laughs> yeah. the womb. Yeah, okay. but <laughs> from the womb. <laughs> so Dan, you were born in Illinois, but you're still a Packers fan. I converted at a young age. Oh, I'm sorry. Blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? How how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, I'm 27. So when when you and I were growing up, we were watching Brett Favre dominate the yeah. Chicago Bears every week right. and just dominate NFL. So it's. Yeah, it's kind of hard. The Bears had, what, like two good seasons in the 90s where the Packers were Yeah, see, were I, like I, I was just the glutton for punishment. I'm like, okay, I'm going to stick with my Cubs, stick with my Bears. I'm just going to watch us lose every year. You and me both, brother. <laughs> it's brutal. Yeah. <laughs> Corey, where do you stand on all that? Straight up Packers fan. Though. Oh, my goodness. Born and raised, right? Born and raised? Born and yeah, born and raised. raised. All right. Yeah. All right, you know what? I'll let it slide just this time. <laughs> hey, man, it's all good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So, thank you guys for... How, how long was the drive coming down here? Uh, so about an hour and a half. hour and a half. Yeah, it was about, about an hour and a half. Hours if you consider That's trying to find bad. parking. Well, thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. Now, with the band, how, when did the band form? Uh, it was 2013. 2013. And is it the same lineup from 2013? Yeah. We've gone through... No, right. same lineup. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's been kind of nice to just stick with the same guys. Yeah. All right. So, th- did you start with a bass player though? <laughs> no, no, no you've never had a bassist. Never no, had a bassist. No. So then, no. why, why have you decided that you're still looking for one if it works that you don't have well, one? Well, technically, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, we just kind of <laughs> make it work. Yeah, we kind of like compensate on our, you know, for guitars. We turn our bass up on the amp a little bit to try to compensate for a lack of bass. But we're still looking for a bass player. We want one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I just tried to punch enough people in the crowd that they don't care anymore. <laughs> They're like, oh, there's not another guy. <laughs> what did you say? No. <laughs> there's no bass. <laughs> All bass players, give us a call, please. So yeah. then the survivalist. Now, uh, a little bit ago we were talking about, you guys had, how long has it been this this name, the survivalist? Uh, probably since 2013. Yeah. All right. Uh, so almost since the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah it's okay. always been this name. Like when we, I mean, we were probably practicing. We didn't really have a working name, but we had the same guys. And so we just kind of worked at it until we find, found a name that we actually liked. So then how do you come up with this name? See, uh, uh, I was, yeah, I was talking with our drummer, Ryan, about it. We were, there's a few months there, like Justin was saying, we were looking for a name and. Um, I had texted him something. I can't remember the phrase. It was something about surviving. And, you know, we wanted some theme about, you know, making it through difficult times to, you know, that sort of theme. And I think Ryan was the one that said, how about we'll just cut all that other extra stuff on there and just call it survivalist. And we all like the ring of that. It just sounded good to us. So we yeah. went with it. Yeah, it stuck really well. It was the first good name out of. Yeah, the m- only good name. The only good name <laughs> out like of many, many bad ones. So what were some of the bad ones? Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> well, well, hold on. Let's back up a minute here. So before, actually, Ryan joined the picture, our drummer, when it was just us three, we had in a previous band, and we were called Armored Straight Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. We're, yeah. Like, we're like, we like the look of that. We're just going to go with that. Yeah, but no. Yeah, no. So you started as a hair metal band. It sounds like it, right? Yeah. <laughs> a uh, little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot, a lot of hair metal and a lot of Scott Stapp impersonations. Nice. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um but yeah, no. Some of the <sighs> what was the other one? We had something about mountains, didn't we? Uh, movers of mountains. Yeah, was that one? I think yeah, it was like mo- moving mountains or something like that. Something. It was movers of that. mountains. But yeah. any uh, name, any name that we got, 
basically the way we would ruin it is we would look at the other guys and start going, oh, like moving kings, kingly mountains, mount- mountains of moving kings. And we would just put kings on anything that we said, and we would just start laughing, and we're like, nope, I can't do it anymore. It was more of a joke, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Movers of Mountains really didn't work because of the abbreviation that we would use. I really don't want to be called Mom. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. I, just, I just got that. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. So then your, your band's been around for two years, and in that time, um, have you guys released any albums? And how many EPs have you made? We just re- released the one EP last year, and we're going to start working on another one this winter. Um, so that's it so far. So what's the EP called? Destination is called. That's the name of the EP. So that's the one we released last October. Yeah, we haven't really decided on a name for the new one yet. Well, yeah, we just write, we just started writing it. Yeah, we, we're starting writing new songs and whatnot. Yeah. So with Destination, how many tracks are on there? Just the three. Just the three. Yeah. And then with the new, we're you doing a full length or an EP for the new? We'll do another EP, I think. All right. Yeah. How many tracks are we looking? Probably another three. Another three. Yeah. All right. Is there a theme to the whole EP? Not well no. for destination there is, but not for the new one. We haven't decided on yet. Yeah, I mean, well, because we're we've been working on new material since we played our last show, and uh, we had some stuff that we already had previously, and so it's we haven't really narrowed down what we're going to record yet. Uh, we're just kind of try to see where we're at when we get to, down to the time for the recording, and kind of pick our best songs from there and kind of go from that. Where was destination recorded at? Uh, we recorded that with some hometown friends of ours at 1550 Sound in Racine. And uh, they hooked us up, so we did our tracks there. Yeah. And for three tracks, how long did it take you guys to record them? I think a few days, right? A couple days. Yeah. It was like, were, a, like a weekend. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I had to come back a couple times, right, for like vocal stuff? Yeah, but I think it still was within a week or so. Yeah, within a week we had it all done. I mean, the benefit to that was we had already been playing those songs for a while before we got into the studio so we knew them really well and we were it was a really nice efficient process they had us all set up and we were in and out of there really quick so that was nice so then with a the live show how many new songs do you guys have that aren't recorded i want to say four three, four. three or four yeah because we have a new intro yeah uh voices yeah uh, we have we have probably about four yeah. so it's like a seven song set for the live show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That right. sounds right. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, what's the first track that you would like to play uh, for all of our listeners off of the Destination EP? I think we got to go Fistful of Dollars first. Fistful yeah. of Dollars. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. We'll, we'll go ahead and we'll play that, and then we'll uh, talk about the strip club when we come back. Cool. <laughs> 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 get it off! Oh, oh, oh. 
This is Frankie from The Bloodline, and you are listening to The Metal Experience. Metal. Woo! 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 All right, we just heard the first track off of... Is that the first track? No, it's the last track. That's we just heard track. the last track, but the first track today off of Survivalist's Destination EP, the song Fistful of Dollars. What is that bad boy about? Oh. Yeah, you go ahead and take this, Justin. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. All <laughs> right. Story here. Um, we love having vocalists on because then they can explain what yeah. happened in their head. Yeah. So, um, incident happened. What was it? about? Strip uh, club incident. <laughs> what? What? I wish it was a strip club incident. Um, it was actually the fourth. No, uh, my house got robbed on the fourth of July. What? That, yeah. That is totally un-American. Yeah. Right w- during the fireworks, coincidentally, and. Um, a lot of money was stolen from me. A lot of things were, uh, the house was wrecked. And our, my house actually got broken into two more times in the span of, of three months. You need to get better locks on your doors, my friend. Right? <laughs> so um, we were writing this new song, and it was the only thing that was on my mind at that time. Is, is my house going to get broken into again? <laughs> Do I want to live here still? And I just started writing it, and it came out the song came out and we were sitting there trying to figure out how we were going to do it and uh do you remember those old rosen commercials rosen Rosen. it's a fistful of dollars it like save you a fistful of dollars and we thought it would be kind of funny and ironic because they did take a fistful of dollars from me all the fistfuls of dollars that you lost all the (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) and so we just kind of called it fistful of dollars so what's the song actually about it's about <laughs> it's about robbed? about getting robbed and okay. like about getting robbed and uh, this dream sequence of just like wanting to kind of like a revenge theme. Yeah, like it's a kind of a revenge theme. Like if I found this person ever, I what I would do. Right. The ball. It sounds like a cool music video idea. I so agree. your house was robbed three times. Three times by the same person. Did they ever catch him? Uh, we the third time. Uh, we don't know for sure if it was the same person. I'm gonna say it's the same person. Probably. Uh, but they got caught, and now they're looking at ten years. Good. Fifteen years. Fuck that person. <laughs> so how are they breaking? Uh, maybe we, we won't tell every. We won't tell the listeners how they keep breaking in your you house. You see, I have this window, right? <laughs> and it's always left open. So if you want to come and do a little latch thing, like a cat would underneath the door, and then you just do that, and then. Nice. Good All thing right. you didn't give out your address. Right. <laughs> and we're giving out your address. Yeah, and here's yeah, my bye. Facebook password. <laughs> and that's uh-huh. that fucking sucks. So other than fistfuls of dollars, did they steal anything else from you? Um. Well, yeah. they. Yeah. We we lost a couple laptops. We lost um, Xbox. Xbox. We lost punk ass kids, man. Yeah. Punk ass kids. Couple, couple broke windows. Left our front door open, and when they left, and uh, yeah. Didn't even have the decency to close the door behind them. No, they just left Those it wide bastards. open. Let the dog out. Fucking let all the animals out. Mm-hmm. Stole my truck. Stole my jeez. No. no truck. No <laughs> truck. What? A- I'm not that Wisconsin. <laughs> on, on the fourth of July. On what the fourth of July. What a dickhead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Independence Day. <laughs> Come on. Well, let's talk about something a little bit more oh. cheerful. It is our Christmas show, after oh, all. Yeah. yeah. All right. Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry everyone. Christmas. Christmas. What's what's on the survivalist wish list and plans for 2016? That's an excellent question. Oh man, I think if if we had to choose one thing, ma- actually making it onto Warp Tour this year. Warp Tour. Yeah. Warp Tour. Warped Warped Tour. For sure. Cool. We were a little bit short of uh, hitting there yeah, last we year. Close. We got close to making it last year, but we that would be probably be one. Of the top things. Yeah. yeah. Warp tour? That's on our wish list. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And do you have a date in mind as to when you would want your second EP to release? Not a specific date. We're working on that, but probably sometime in the spring. Yeah. Spring. Because we, we want to be in the recording studio uh, come February. Yeah, January, February. So. That's a perfect time to do it when it's all that snow and you get bored being exactly. indoors. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the hardest part you find about recording? Tracking guitars. Easily is probably the most. Well, I don't know. What do you say about vocals, Justin? I mean, I don't track vocals, so. I wouldn't say it's hard. It's more different. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're just standing in a room 
and you have the music in your headphones, but you're sitting there screaming. You can't hear yourself. And oh yeah, you can hear yourself through the recording. But like, it's the weirdest thing on the planet. You just know that it's quiet in your room, and you look like an idiot, just like rah, 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 just <laughs> screaming in your room, and then everyone's just laughing at you because they can only hear you screaming. They can't hear the music, and it's it's odd. It's odd. But I would say probably tracking guitars is the hardest thing. You know, as a vocals myself, I think the hardest thing about tracking vocals is trying to get into that live type of feel. Because, I mean, you just kind of like stand in there and you're like, all right, go. You're like, when everyone's jamming together, you yeah. feel it. And oh, you it's just so fucking, much easier. Oh, you just fucking bring it. Yep. Yeah, because the adrenaline's going. You see the crowd. You see the people. You can see the reaction on their faces when you're uh, performing it. But when you're sitting there just kind of looking at a wall and you see this one microphone and you have to keep a certain distance, it almost feels like... Forced. Forced, yeah, mm. that you're sitting there doing it. I mean, it's cool because you can hear the product and you can uh, hear everything afterwards, but sitting there kind of, <laughs> it's awkward, to say the least. Now, speaking of live field, you guys, um, you're from Wisconsin. Do you play more of your shows up in Wisconsin out by you, or do you travel down to Chicago a lot more to get some of your shows? We've done a mixture of both. Uh, we for the most part, we've stayed in southeast Wisconsin for most of our shows, but we've played in, you know, Grays Lake, Illinois, and I think a couple other places. Yeah, we played in Round Link once. Yeah. So, yeah. northeast Illinois, we try to go down there once in a while. Mm -hmm. Or here, I should say. <laughs> What's been your favorite place so far to play? Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. <laughs> oh. Favorite. I don't know. I There hasn't been a bad, there hasn't been any place so far that I've been like, I don't want to go back here. But yeah. I've never had a... Probably Hattricks and Kenosha. We played there more, probably more than... We're probably more comfortable there right yeah. now. Yeah. Know exactly what the sound guy is supposed to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's that's fun. Yeah. It was... The Northern Metal Fest was pretty fun. Yeah. That That was more probably because of drinking than anything else. <laughs> Northern, oh, where so was that drinking? at? <laughs> uh, what was that? Like 30 minutes away from Duluth, Minnesota? Yeah. It was way... It's in, way in the boonies. Northern, yeah. Like the place that we were at was the campground bait and tackle bar billiard hall it was everything all in one convenient little thing right next to a lake right next to a lake nice. that's pretty awesome yeah. mm -hmm. was, was it a time. whole weekend event or just yeah. a day yeah, yeah it was whole a whole weekend. weekend event it was pretty fantastic yeah i really do like how there's a lot of people that will have the effort to put in those weekend festivals and book a whole bunch of bands on this property in the middle of nowhere. I mean, a lot of people actually do show up to those just because it's a camping experience. It's a bonding experience. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's very, very awesome. And, and I find that it's 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 uh, really cool because, uh, like, uh, especially in metal, like, there's some camaraderie because of it being metal and we don't get radio play and we don't get all this other stuff. And people just kind of join together and everyone's really, really cool about that. Yep. Now you guys are um, friends with a few of the Chicago bands. Um, obviously, you're wearing, like Evangelist and stuff. Um, have you found the reception when you come down here to be? Um, I don't know what I'm how I'm trying to phrase this. I don't either. Please. When what do you mean? It's been warm. It's been <laughs> yeah. It's been especially warm. Warm reception. I was I was <laughs> going to go off of, like comparing it to how you guys play in Wisconsin. Is, is there a difference in fans and audience? Yeah, we don't, I, I don't think we have any like real fans in Illinois, but they've always been really cool. Yeah, everyone that we played in front of uh, has responded really well. Like it was, um, uh, we played at a bar called Copa's on Round Lake, and it was. It seemed like a pretty young crowd to be like for a bar scene. What would normally be there, but everybody was really cool, and everyone was in it, and. Our style is a little bit different from like the deathcore like stuff that was going on, and everyone was still into it and awesome about it. And yeah, so it's been really good responses whenever we've been in Illinois. Mm. Nice. Well, you guys still have a couple songs left to play off of this EP, which I do want to uh, play going into the show because obviously we still got plenty of time. So you guys actually still have a couple bands that you are friends with that you like from the. Illinois, Wisconsin scene. Um, you've got two more bands. So, what would you want to play next? Probably uh, the Levitated. Sure. The Levitated. Yeah. Okay. And the track that they had up was called Entreat, and I'm pretty sure we saw them with the Contortionist Luco. 
The was Levitated. That, the Levitated, yeah. was that a bottom Bo- lounge that we saw them at, or Mojo's? Something like that. We've seen them, though. They're very familiar. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have there's some young picture. cats. They're really cool. I'd have to see a picture of them. It's okay. You can look them up on your spare time. I don't, I don't have spare time. All right, time. here we go. Here is another pick by the survivalist. It is The Levitated with their song, Intrigued. Let's do it.
This is not rock and roll! You're goddamn right. This is the Metal Experience, and now back to Morgan and Luco. And we are back with the Metal Experience. I am Morgan Danielle with Luco Blaze. Mm. And once again, we have no sound men here because they're too good for us now. Oh, we're no. all grown up and I'm running the board. So, Yay. so here we go. Right. Um, we just heard a song by The Levitated called Intrigued, which was a pick from our new friends in The Survivalist. And they came down all the way from Racine, Wisconsin to hang out with us tonight at Fitz's Bear Keys. And Elmhurst, which you can join us at every Tuesday night. We record a new show, so come on out at 8 p.m. till 10.30, whenever we ish. finish the show-ish. But um, we, all, uh, during the break, we're discussing our Christmas card, which we sent a lot, over 100 of them this year, which is awesome. Morgan Please sent tag your pictures <laughs> of you getting four. the cards. We would love to see them. We've gotten a couple on Instagram and a couple of them on Facebook. But, Luco, so go ahead. For, for everyone out there, let me just explain. So, <laughs> <laughs> see what I happened don't, was. I don't do Christmas cards. I don't do artsy fartsy anything. I just, you know, I show up, I drink some beer, dick and fart jokes, and then I leave. You know, it's like. So Morgan sends out this Christmas card all over the U.S. to bands that have sent us. Me all, this is the second year we've done all it. All over. She sent it to, we've sent it to other countries. This year. And there's a picture of me <laughs> in a shower <laughs> with another man. Not just another man. You love this man. Greg. And I do love Greg. <laughs> he's one of our sound guys. He, he's also our web guy, our webmaster. We call him Greg Master. And I want to thank and, uh, Rob from Chicago Metal Alliance so for taking those happened, pictures of you guys. The Chicago Metal Alliance, <laughs> Rob, calls us out. And he's like, hey, man, you guys want to come swimming at my place? We're like, uh, fuck yeah. So we go <laughs> swimming at his place, right? Not his, like uh, the apartment complex. They have a pool. And, you know, when you're leaving, they have a little like a like shower area to just rinse off all the chlorine <laughs> and shit. And we're showering, and Rob comes <laughs> running in. We're not showering. We're rinsing off. Oh, we're still, like, I have a bathing suit on. <laughs> Rob comes running and taking pictures of me and Greg rinsing off, <laughs> looking like total, you know, gay boys or something. I don't know. <laughs> so she sends us out everywhere, other countries. There's me with my shirt off looking fat with another man in a shower. It's like, what, what are you? Though... To be fair, there is extreme love there. You can see There's it. There's a between, lot of joy on your there face. There is so much Greg's joy and mirth. And I have a giant mustache, I oh, believe. Good. Do I have the mustache? It's just in that a picture? giant mustache. I would argue that's a porn stash yeah. at that point. So it looks even weirder. <laughs> Yeah, for those listening, we have it right in front of us here. This is a beautiful picture. It yeah. is. It's a great it's Christmas card, It's two grown card, men Luko. taking it's a shower. It's a great Christmas card. A rinse off. And I'm sure it was the talk of everyone's card. It's like back in card. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then when she sends it to other countries, they're probably like, what the fuck is this? Who are these people? Hey, you, you look, look a little bit like Borat in that picture. I'm not oh even going to lie to you. Yeah. Very nice. Borat slash John. I like you. John Stossel. I've heard John Stossel before. <laughs> I don't oh, know what that is. Jesus. He's yes, a but the Christmas cards, the please please post your pictures of you guys holding it or that, saying that you got it because I'd like to know who got what. <laughs> there was a few of them returned last year because of the wrong addresses, but I'm hoping they all got there safely this year. This has everyone on that it. It has it's, everyone. It's got Bill, one of our sound guys, Dave, our sound guy with his, with his uh, new baby new, Dave, new baby and, and, fiance. And, and fiance. It's got Joe, Joey Gasoline Dick. Uh, Rabbi Dave, that guy Bill, uh, it's got uh, Josh Padilla and his uh, wife. They do our uh, um, CD uh, reviews, reviews from, the from the crypt. And uh, the top right corner is sweet. We interviewed Cryptopsy, which I've been a huge fan of Cryptopsy for a long time, and we actually got to interview him this last year where it was like, you know, I, I know it's just like, hey, you're just another guy, whatever, but still it's like, whoa. 
Cryptopsy. I've been listening to you guys since I was in high school. Like, swing, like. <laughs> uh, so that was really sweet. That's, and that's why the only thing he on told there. them during that whole interview was he listened to them when he mowed his lawn. Yeah. Guess, I, who, I, all, I, guess who did all the talking during that? Me. I the person that didn't really listen to them until that interview. I, he didn't want to say shit. Literally <laughs> listen to Cryptopsy every single. That's. That's what I listen to when I mow my lawn because this, the one CD that they have is the perfect length so that when the CD's over, I'm done mowing my lawn. Nice. So it just works out that way. And I, I was like, I listen to you guys every week when I mow my lawn. How oh, convenient. Thank you. Well, uh, that is up on our later. website. If you want to see that video, it is on themetalexperience.com. It's the first video on the homepage that Greg but put But they, they were really awesome guys. And, um, yeah, they put on a killer show. And they're coming. They're coming back. With Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> Oh, wow. Which is Holy fucking crap. sweet. Oh, nice. So Ew. Canadian Cryptopsy, check them out. They're Canadian. They're uh, playing the Metro. Fuck, right? I don't even metro? extreme. I don't even know what to call them. They're just fucking crazy. Brutal They're death metal. metal. Yeah. But so. anyway, back hmm. to the survivalist. Now back you had your whole rant about you took a shower uh, picture and it's on a picture. Christmas card. <laughs> You'll get over it. <laughs> um, okay, so the survivalist. I was going to ask you guys what were some of your influences growing up, and what are your influences now as a band making this type of music. Nice. Oh, man. Good uh, questions. Uh, well, uh, shout out to uh, me and Dan's old time buddy, Adam Graham. Uh, I think it kind of started with this mix CD, like way back in the day. And there was stuff like Silverstein and Voice That's Fire and what? Slipknot was on there, too. That's a huge it was, <laughs> it was like all over the map. But yeah, yeah. It, that's kind of like that came out right when uh, like uh, Papa Roach Infest came out and, ah, and all that good stuff. CD. And then <sighs> just shut up. And then System of a Down came out. Yep. And like, well, Toxicity came out at the same time. And that's the first time I'm like, fuck all these other kinds of stuff. I'm listening to this now. And kind of that new metal phase. Yeah, that new metal phase. Yeah. And that kind of bled into early screamo, hardcore, and. Uh, what about you, Corey? I'm kind of interested to hear this. It's to hear my point of view? Oh, God. <laughs> Corey's like an 80s metal fan. I was, yeah. Yeah, I was totally 80s metal, totally like Metallica all the way. metallica You know, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't really until... Um, I get that. Yeah. It wasn't really until I started hanging out with uh, Justin and Dan more that I really got into the, the new metal scene and whatnot. You know, ever since I started hanging out with them, listening to music from them... You know, Born of Osiris and uh, you know Attila and all this other stuff. Like I really yeah. got, really, really got into it more. Yeah, I started like, taking music a little more serious. Like yeah. Mazda Flames, Miss May I. Oh my God, so Architects. many good names. Veil of Maya. <laughs> yeah, totally. Those are some of the influences for writing today. I think we like to listen to those guys a lot. Uh-huh. So speaking of Attila, just really quickly because I just saw this posted today. Um, Franz is Franz and Conan, the offering for fifty dollars a month. You have access to his, his phone, phone number. number. Yeah, that's what real. That's for real. a fan club yep. type thing? What? You get his phone number for fifty dollars a month to talk to Franz. I mean, don't get me wrong. That's genius marketing. <laughs> it is genius marketing. Who the hell <laughs> make that money? Who is that not just for to talk to Franz for a whole month for $50? So then like, does he change his phone number every month? Because once you give it to it, it's like, I got it forever. I can call you whenever, fucker. Yeah, I didn't. That's I don't know what point. the terms Either are going for this. He's probably just buying burners. Maybe. Like a cheap phone like for a, a Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, what would you talk to him about? Like, hey, man, how did you do a lot of drugs today? Yeah, I did a lot of drugs today. Cool, man. Uh, what would you talk to him about? I don't, I don't What's your new song about? It's about touching my dick. Yeah. All right, got it. And yeah. then it was moving on. Like, I don't know. You see the comments online. Those kids are crazy. I'm sure they got a bunch of stuff they want to ask him and stuff. And yeah, he's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I But he's <laughs> professional business-wise, he's got some really unique ideas. He does. So yeah. I, He's doing his thing. He know, is props. doing his thing. That's pretty... I just had to bring that up. Not not a lot of people come in here and talk about Attila. But oh, I'm yeah. a proud Attila fan. There you despite go. what people Rock on. <laughs> despite what people say. Yeah, we're really jamming like those guys them. on the way down here, so Hell yeah. Man. Which album? Outlaw. Yep, the best one. Yeah. Yep. Love that album. So what were some of the musicians that inspired you like individual musician that inspired you to be a vocalist and a guitarist? And mm. an, another and, guitarist. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> guitarist obviously means two because whatever. Uh, 
Wow. Well, um, I'm biased since I love Met- I love Metallica since like so it was first James. Was, it was totally James. Yeah. Not Kirk. No, I'm a rhythm. No. What? I'm a rhythm. I'm a rhythm guy. All right. All right. You know. Oh uh, wow. Um. So, I guess the first guy that like really inspired me was Shane Told from Silverstein. Okay. Uh, because lyrically that man, uh, just writes a great song. He can write a great hook. He can sing. He can scream. It just sounds so violent coming out of him, and uh, that was one of the things that got me into uh, screaming and wanting to learn how to do that. Um, now, uh, probably s- like Sam from Architects. Yeah, Sam. Sam is the man. <laughs> he, Sam <laughs> the man. So he he is seriously the man. He can do anything. Um, yeah, so probably him right now. Still Shane. Shane's still doing it twenty years after the fact. Um. Yeah, I probably still stick stick with those two. Like right now, those two. I love Surge. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Surge from System. That's mm-hmm. still got my guy. Did you like his solo stuff? I actually did. I'm one of the odd ones that like blasted that CD on my. Uh, he had in my a couple car. of them. He had yeah. Luck the Dead, and then what was the other one? I can't remember. The, I can't remember the new. He had a, like a live album, like where he did it in a uh, cathedral, which was kind of odd. What? He kind of went like Frank Zappa ish. For a, for a little bit of it, he kind of looks like Frank Zappa, though. Yeah. So. Yes, he does. Orca Symphony Number no. One. I that sounds pretty. That the sounds Jazz right. in Christ. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he called it. The Not Jazz surprised. in Christ. Wow. What about you, Dan? Uh, for guitar, I don't know. There's a lot because I don't know. I wasn't always in a metal band, so you know I've drawn inspiration from a ton of different guitars. But I'd say for the metal stuff, I'd. I have to shout out to Marco Kubo from Vale of Maya. He's just so heavy, and him being the only guitar player in his band, you know, he writes, his writing style is so different and just puts a lot of different stuff together. He's a big inspiration, I think. What were your non-metal influences that you didn't want to say? It's okay. That, that's where people draw oh, from. No, yeah, for sure. Um, a lot more old school influences there. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, um, Jimi Hendrix. You know, a lot of a lot more blues influence uh, rock stuff. I was into for a while. Mm. So you mentioned that y- you really liked Born of Osiris and Vale of Maya. They're um, I don't know if it's coming out by you guys, but in Chicago they just announced that in February, February twentieth, the, the big lounge. the big four Vale of Maya or three after the burial and Born of Osiris are all playing together. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, that's, yeah. Gonna that's be a like the show. biggest show so far of next year. Yeah, is that the first? They just show? played together this Sunday. I was about to say it was without after the burial. Without after the burial, but yeah, yeah that's still yeah. that's awesome. That's so good. I, I will drive down here for that. <laughs> it's so worth it. Yeah, it's so worth it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna be great. Guess he's buying me tickets. For my is birthday. it just me? I'm not a fan of Vela Maya. I don't know. Maya. Really? You, okay, hey, but have you listened you, to the new stuff, though? The new stuff with the know, singing vocalist, it's yes. so good. So good. There's so just good. nothing that caught my interest. Now, with Listen the new the CD, new it's so different. Yeah. yeah. But they've gone through, what, four singers? Five within the past of their career? It's like, they were it's with ridiculous. Brandon for a while. Has it been that many? I know for sure. They've I think gone it's through three. a lot. I think every single time I saw them was with a different vocalist. Okay. Yeah, it's insane. But yeah, if you didn't if you didn't like old Vela Maya, no, listen the new to the new is stuff. So it's such a good album. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's so right. different for them. It is it's good. Album. But I really like After the Burial and, and Born of Osiris. So. Oh yeah, there you go. And who awesome. do you know who's playing since Justin passed? No, I have no I idea. Heard the replacement guitar player. I don't know. No, Maybe they're just touring with a guy. I don't know if they added a member or not. I don't know either. Morgan, you have the inner web. I'm looking right now to see if they even listed somebody because I knew that news. The, the Wikipedia the it? song was released, but I didn't see that they announced a new guitarist ever. No, they still have Justin listed on their Facebook. So Ooh. I have no idea. That's eerie. That's yeah, weird. that's a bit eerie. Yeah. That's really that was that's a, sad. That was in Wisconsin, wasn't it? Yep. Up in Eau Claire. Yeah. What did you guys do? <laughs> it wasn't whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Oh, man. <laughs> we don't claim that part of the state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. That's up north. So what are you guys... Uh, thinking about for next year and show wise have you booked anything yet are you are you looking to branch out a little bit more maybe do a tour now that you've got two eps going to be out we're keeping our options open um right now we booked a show in february in west Dallas, wisconsin which is just north of us so still in the southeast area but yeah we'd like to we more just want to play out more in like the milwaukee chicago area kind of 
get outside of our comfort zone a little bit there and kind of travel a little bit more. Nice. Uh, that'd be fun. Yeah. And then apart from that show, I think the next thing that we're doing is what? Thoughts for food? For sure that we're doing. Yeah. And Racine, that's a food drive event. That's in our hometown. And when is that? That's in uh, March. Yeah. Mm. yeah first like, weekend of March. Yeah. It's like a bunch of bars in the downtown area all get together and money gets donated and food gets donated for, food like bank. Home, for a food bank Racine and the homeless County. shelters. Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. It's a good event. They raise a lot of, a lot of money, a lot of food. Awesome. Well, you guys have a couple tracks still on your EP that you want to play. The Destination so off EP? Of Destination, what is the next track? You can go ahead and play like Rise. That's a really short one. Rise? Yeah, yeah. Rise is a short one. Yeah. A short. Perfect. Here we go. It's Rise. This is Rosie. And I'm Brian from False Hope Fades. And you're listening to The Metal Experience. Woo! And we just heard The Survivalist off the Destination EP, the song Rise. What was that bad boy about? Huh. <laughs> stand up. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of, it's, it's, it was kind of like one of those things that just to try to get people into it, like stand up, you know, um, stand I guess cause one thing as a band that like, we've always tried to do is any, every sen- sort of lyric or any song that we write, we try to write it so that there's actual s- some sort of meaning behind it. It's not just like a, yeah, let's get drunk a party, which is, there's nothing wrong with those <laughs> songs, um, but we wanted something more out of it. So that's kind of, that was kind of our response to just, you know, stand up with us, you know, rise with us. Like, you know, you don't have to be down. Just a quick little. You yeah, that's our short intro track to the EP. Yeah. Yeah. Get things started. Nice. Yeah. Now, is that the song that you usually open your sets with, or do you open We used with to. We, we used, used to. to. Yeah. We used to. Yeah, we have a kind of a new intro that we, we do have a nowadays. different thing now, but yeah, that, we used to start our shows with that one. How long is that? You said it's an intro track? Yeah, it's like it's what, only about a minute, a minute, and a half. minute and a half. Not bad. All right. All right. What's the favorite. <laughs> thing that you guys enjoy about performing in front of an audience whoa i think the feedback once when (laughs) when people get into it and you can tell that they like what you're playing like i don't know that's kind of indescribable that's just a cool feeling yeah yeah i i think um like the feedback is awesome i think for me is when uh usually there's a moment where i i like to at least some once in the show i like to get down in the crowd and be in the middle of the pit or wherever what's going on and just seeing people rock out to the music that you created that's just really cool it's instant gratification you can't get much better than that are there any pre-show rituals for you guys as a group or individually that you go through no i don't think so really maybe drink a couple beers (laughs) (laughs) that's about it we should make a, a habit out of having ritual. a shot before every show. Yeah, yeah, that should uh, be. A, that can get dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> One leads to two, leads to uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Are there nerves? Is that why you drink? No, no. I mean, maybe, maybe it's. Uh, I think in we the drink because we're from Wisconsin. Yeah, I think it's just we're supposed to. <laughs> Everything you do in Wisconsin, end. there's drinking involved. There's not a habit that you have or a thing that you do that you can't drink at. 
You come to like, Wisconsin, you drink. If you're playing That's darts, that. you're drinking. If you're bowling, you're drinking. Everything if you, happens at bars. Everything <laughs> happens at bars. That's the only thing you do. Yeah. Sounds you like a good drink. song title. Everything happens at bars. Ooh. <laughs> it actually does sound like a very good one. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Morgan for our new song title. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'll see it on the next EP. Yeah, that was easy. All <laughs> yeah, right. Have you had the opportunity <laughs> to song. play with any national acts? Hmm, hmm, not really. Oh, we played Pretty from local. a band from Texas. Oh, yeah, a tragedy, a tragedy at hand. Yeah. Those guys tra- come from Dallas, Texas. And then Alter Perceptions out of They're Chicago. from Chicago. Those guys are awesome. Yeah. They were on uh, last year? Cool. This year. This year? Yeah, they were one of the, the shows summer. that we did over in the summer. Right, I'm, I'm pretty sure a Tragedy at Hand we might have actually used for an unsigned band pick. That sounds super familiar. What? I cool. Think what? I'm looking through the old ones to see if they're even there. But I do remember something from a tragedy at hand coming through at one point. Like yeah. Those guys were those guys were on tour and they took Alter Perceptions with them and they swung through Kenosha, Wisconsin. We played a show with those guys. That oh was, maybe was fun. Yeah. Oh no, Tragedy Awaits Us All. That huh? Okay. But Tragedy at Hand, I think <clears throat> I'm I'm remembering that because Alter Perceptions talked about them. Cool. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. So many stories. <laughs> oh my god! Do you guys have any worst moments on stage, or any embarrassing any worst moments? moments? <laughs> well, I mean, like y- you got sick, or you cut yourself, or I don't know. You something. cut yourself. Like you, you got hooked on a string. Jeez, he, uh, hooked on a string. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to phrase this. I'm stupid. Shut up. Justin uh, stepped on my guitar cable one time and completely unplugged my guitar <laughs> during one of our tracks. When we were playing in Kenosha. And in my defense, I was. Was giving it all I could. Oh, he could. was. He was <laughs> totally like no doubt about it. You know? I'm just like, oh shit, there's a chord, and he's just like, do do do. Oh, plug but back it, in, it's, it's going not, right back at it. It's not all his fault. It was my fault too. I didn't, I didn't make sure. It was oh, of course, so nice. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll oh. take I'll take part of responsibility. Best for friends that. stick together. <laughs> Let's <laughs> not ever do that again. Yeah, no, that's too too much male bonding. <laughs> So not, then, not as male bonding as a shower picture, huh? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> oh, <Jeez. man>. <laughs> looking like Borat in there. Yeah. So with with the past shows, where were some of the others? How many how many shows you guys got under the belt? You guys have been a band for Ooh. two years yeah, now. Two years. We've, we've only, only been, been playing. playing sh- sh- yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. Jinx. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've only been playing shows for a little over a year now. So yeah, it's just last November. Yeah. So I don't know how many. Yeah. We tried to. We wanted to try and get at least one or. One or two a month was our goal, but sometimes it couldn't yeah. be reached. So, more than one fistful, a <laughs> little bit less than two fistfuls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Why not? Perfect. Morgan, yes. I'm just <laughs> today. Like the the internet blew up with the whole uh, "Thy Art Is Murder" vocalist CJ leaving and I was gonna Amir's yeah, band quit that. on their vocalist, and it's the only. Wait, band member who? left. Amir, the vocalist, is the only guy left. The whole band just what? quit on him. Yeah, what? Quit. Did you not hear that? I did not hear that. I part. guess um, yeah. it was announced that um, one of the members that quit actually said today that it was a negative work environment that caused the entire band to leave just the vocalist too, behind. Too, too many com- neck tattoos. They've been complaining for a few years now. I don't know. The, the, the last album that they put out, I've never been a fan of them, but that guy says some ridiculous, nasty shit. <laughs> like, like There's what? only so much what like, does he terrible, say? What does he say? Tell raunchy me lyrics. He says. I don't want to because I don't like them. <laughs> Come I, on, tell their me. songs are awful. <laughs> I farted. Awfully good. I like I their know. doorknob, doorknob, poop, poop knob. But anyway, I don't know. I'm sad about CJ leaving, but I'm here. <laughs> that pan can... The guy can go fuck himself. I don't Aww. like them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> got real up in here. To be fair, that dude puts off. on a great live show. I did see them once. Yeah, yeah they were okay. I just, <laughs> I never, I never got into them. Yeah. But anyway, There's I was some just. Some bands you don't vibe with, you know, that's how it goes. Mm. Eh. But that's what, that's what I was reading was that it was just announced that that's why. Amir is so too left alone. I don't even know if it can be called Amir now. If it's just two that big guy. announcements right. today. Well, no, the artist murder was yesterday. Amir was today, but that's what everybody has been talking about yeah. all day. Dang. Was those two things, and then that tour that got released with Boo and after and the burial Franz, and shit. Of course, oh, and Franz, Franz. <laughs> Franz so weird. 
I don't know. But that that's how I get some of my information. I just I'm just I'm, always on. I'm I'm kind of broken online. up about the the art is murder though. Yeah, because they're so good and he's such a good vocalist. But I understand why you quit. Just monster vocals. Yeah, that's why I refer to him as. Yeah, uh. big. Just did you read his letter or his yeah. post of? Why? It was it was very sincere. I get it. I get it too, I and mean, that's know, kind of ten years. It's it's hard, especially when you're like from this little island country, Australia, and you're trying to make it in the huge world, and you're only making sixteen to eighteen thousand a year. But then you got to think all those travel expenses and everything. Yeah. I mean, that just shows you for a band that's been ten years how horrible it still is to be a deathcore band that you're not making money. Yeah, exactly. I think it kind of yeah. speaks to the music industry and where it's at right now, and you know, mm-hmm. it sucks for him. But I I get it. You know, he's like. He was saying, oh, he's just—he's 32 and he needs to start making money. He has a fiance, wants to start a family, and it's hard to do that. It's respectful, you know? though. I mean, why yeah. would you want to? If you're not making that much money, you want to be able to provide for your, the kids that you exactly. want to have, and to be able to. Well, do especially that. in Australia, because you're like you said, yeah, you're off. Yeah. I mean, you got to travel just to fucking play anywhere. They you're played traveling. everywhere, though. Like they—they they did Europe a lot. The work, the they uh, went with White Chapel and stuff. The Mayhem overseas. Fest. Mayhem Fest and everything is just the state. Did you guys see them in Mayhem Fest? So they were good. fucking awesome. They were so good. So good. I'm ac- I'm really happy I was able to see them at least once. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just fucking kill it. Speaking mm-hmm. of Mayhem Fest, I think they didn't they cancel that. It's gone now, isn't it? You know what, Morgan? What did you tell me yesterday? We were talking about that. So my brother, he's got these. Weird Her sites that he crazy. goes to. Fucking which, okay, crazy. my brother, I am going to try. Good crazy, bad crazy? Crazy, crazy. Just crazy? <laughs> no, so That's any good. band, so he listens to the most abstract metal bands <laughs> ever. Not saying that they're good. Okay. And <laughs> if he fucking. It's underground metal. It, yeah. It's very funny because he'll be like, hey, check out this band. They're from Finland. They're grindcore, <laughs> post hardcore. And you're like, what? What is that? Yeah. What? Is, what? He'll he'll it, it's funny every band he he'll show you he'll tell you the band where they're from and what their goofy ass genre is every band and they're like the most outrageous genres. Yeah. I, I I'm like Morgan. We need to have we he needs to have a segment on this show. Just talk. He's just like just for his underground metal. Just <laughs> the, the most underground. He's just got all this knowledge of this goofy goofy metal, but it's like people listen to it. You know, maybe it's not my forte, but he listens to it. A bunch of his friends, you know, he's a bunch of people listen to it. But, oh, my goodness, that kid <laughs> is fucking crazy. I he, love it. <coughs> he claims that he read somewhere that um, so yes, Mayhem going back to may Mayhem come Fest. back this year, which I don't think so. I mean, if anything, somebody else is going to take over. I, I mean, because I can't find anything right okay, now that confirms it. Okay, so that, that was true it. then, though, that they did yeah. call a stop. Yeah, it, it, was, it was after... What so was it, 10, originally, eight years of doing eight years, it. Yeah. yeah, we thought Ozfest. I thought Ozfest was going to make a, a return, but Just Ozzy's Japan, touring with Black Sabbath. So it's like, well, that's not going to happen. Then that's not going to happen. At least not this year. Well, they had one in Japan, I think. You know what? I think they've been having them in Japan every oh, year. Yeah, but yeah. it's just like a fucking. Just like a They're weekend like festival. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's not a big tour as it as I, it should be. I heard in Japan like. Bands from over here go and play Japan, and their shows are fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, people in Japan fucking love metal music. It's awesome. And here it's like, oh, hey, Jimmy. Hey, if you had to travel out. anywhere as, as a group to play, where would you want to go? Japan. <laughs> Let <laughs> them say where they want to go. You can go to Asia. Who cares? <laughs> go to Japan. Go see baby metal. Who wants to finish that oh off? Oh, my God. Someone no finish that metal. off. <laughs> You, you say that on the air, and they're all wondering what you're saying. Beer, beer. What, do you, what do you want to finish off, Lugo? <laughs> like, but hey, anyway, I'm not in the shower with you right now. <laughs> 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 finish off this bar of soap back with to, me. Uh, <laughs> survivalist and where they'd want to play one day. But baby metal? You guys aren't fans of the baby metal? Oh, man. I okay. personally don't have much of a problem with them, but I cannot <laughs> listen to them all the time like one of my best friends can. Yeah, all that's right. understandable. Oh. I accept that as an answer. I feel like I'm going to go on a rant on this one right right Please. here. Yes. Go for it. Oh, Can you oh, do man. it with here one it of your crazy impressions? <sighs> Just to make it even more amusing. I don't even know. Could what? you speak like a baby metal fan? What? AKA what? Asian. No, 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 no. <laughs> See, like, I feel like the, the typical baby metal fan is like an 
older middle aged man. Or, I am not with, a middle aged <laughs> man, like, by the way. <laughs> with like a double gut. Like, what are you saying tat- about me? <laughs> oh, I'm not. Oh, she's I'm right there. I love baby. Mel. She's right there. <laughs> but I feel. I feel like okay. I think. I think that is a cool concept. The whole idea of them being like 15. Like there's a maximum age that the girls can be. Wait, that's a thing. That's totally a thing. Like mm. they graduate into another band. Or like another thing, because once they get to a certain age, they're not allowed to be in the band anymore. Really? That's totally a thing. For That's the voices, they for the voices, a, yeah. Uh, because it's like what? a. But look at how old the woman is that plays Pikachu. You're telling me those girls still can't pull it uh, off. So you're telling all me I'm saying baby it's metal. a little <laughs> bit odd to see a, like adolescent girls dancing like that on stage. It's just an odd thing for me, and it's just like I can't get into it. And then but you feel wrong. I feel wrong, <laughs> and every guy, go- every person that I've come across that likes this band is that prototypical creepy creepy (laughs) middle-aged dude still works as a pizza delivery guy and just always is just it's just you're not a pizza delivery guy just like me i got the gray hair (laughs) i got the gray hair and you got the burns i got the burns i got the chops the chops i see your point though it it makes Yes. Oh yes, the, oh, yes, look at those Asian girls. So wait, wait, you're telling me that they've had multiple little girls doing the vocals? Mm-hmm. Yes, I didn't know that. Yeah, I think like at the maximum age you could be is 15. Once you actually get to legal driving age. So wait a ball. second. So all right, the band, but realistically, the band playing that music, the music's fucking. Sweet. Oh, it's absolutely awesome. So they're like, listen, whoa, you're 16. <laughs> Ah, yeah, we're time to cut it loose. We're yeah, time to cut you loose. Yeah, they call it graduating. So how That's do you... from what I read. How do you tour with a fucking 14, 13, 14, 15-year-old? That's just weird. That's what I'm saying. I don't get it. Like, as a grown it's man, young. I'd be like, no, you're too little. Get away. No. Well, you know, this uh, is like one of the first yeah, their times that we've, we've ever seen something like that, though. But you That's think true. back in the pop punk era... era Error. Error. What the fuck Error. am I saying? Error. 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 You know, you look at like Aaron Carter and the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC when they no. started. They were teens. We'll never look they, at that. Wait, <laughs> no, wait, wait. Valid point. They were pop showing your colors punk, right now. Right? No, they Not weren't. Not pop punk. My bad. This they is were. the metal experience, and you're <laughs> you're dropping I'm, Backstreet I'm Boys. I'm trying off. to. You're maxing, something. You're maxing that out. You need to turn yourself no. down a little bit. Hold on. Turn they, yourself down a little bit. I'm doing it in post. They had those Jesus. bands touring when they were what the fuck? <laughs> younger. Okay. But this is the first time that we've ever seen an international band, and especially from another country like Japan, which doesn't usually do stuff like that with women, especially of that age, to tour like that. This is the first time that we've ever seen. Where have you seen that with go- with women around here? Okay, the only band that I can think oh. of is Spice Girls and S Club Seven. The Spice Girls were like thirty five when they did that. Not when no, they started out when they were younger too. Yeah, like thirty two. Well, I suppose you can make an, an <laughs> argument to any of those Disney stars, like when they were in their shows and having to do these CDs right. and look all Anna sweet. Montana. <clears throat> But yeah. again, a lot of them that weren't from whore. like Europe or Japan and everything. They were all usually from the states. That that was not uncommon or That's Canada. True. This is just a weird concept. Weird. Like a bunch of grown men hanging out with like thirteen-year-olds. No Pedophilia, different than y- dudes really liking Britney Spears. And she hey, was hey. like 14, 15. No, when she was not. Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was young when she started. She, she was, really she was. was young. When she came out with that, uh, what she was her was first song? Baby, Oops, one more time. How old was she? 15. 15, I think, yeah. She, she was 15? 15? She, she was You're like 15 young. when she recorded it, and I think she was like 16 when she made young. that video. Well, listen. See, this is the thing is, at the time, I was also 15, so I'm like, damn, yeah. look at that other 15-year-old. Yeah. So, yeah, it was fine. And actually, on Baby Metal's Wikipedia, it only lasts list those three girls that they've grown up with that band the whole time. Ooh. Ooh. What? I just got shot down. Are you giving us... Justin, are you giving us false fucking (laughs) information? For shame, You may not be the baby metal fan you thought you were. I'm just going to take this away. The baby metal aficionado. So let me put it this way, Luco. Britney Spears right now is 34. Yeah, and I'm 30, so... Uh Uh-huh. Baby, one more time. How old was she? Came out in 1998. So how old was she? How old were you? I have no idea. In 98, I was eight. 
So then you add. So I was 13. You I were was 13? Nine. Wow. I was she was, okay. So I was 13. So she, she was, was about 16. If I was 13, she was 17. So I'm like, damn, look at that 17 year old bag. <laughs> yeah, so basically. <laughs> still, still not legal. Shut your mouth. Still not legal. I'm going to listen to your garbage music. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay, well, that was uh, the metal experience topic today. That was the argument of baby metal. That's metal-ing. not no. That's, <laughs> that doesn't because I'm not like now. I'm not. I'm 30 years old. I'm not like oh hey look at who's who's some little fucking bitch coming up in the. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know pop music. <laughs> Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. I look She's at her. 21. I'm like get the fuck out of here, you stupid bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. I'm like fuck that girl. She goes out with the beebs. I don't care about either of those human <laughs> you beings. Just call them the- I hate both of them. The Beebs. Why did you just call them the Beebs? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm just ranting. Oh, I don't know. Sorry. It's the it's the lack of Justin Bieber wrapping paper to wrap his Christmas so, gift. Oh, with funny that he story. Have what? That he's so the a dollar fan. store, the dollar store by my house, right? The past two years has had Justin Bieber <laughs> wrapping paper, and everyone fucking hates Justin Bieber so much. Me, I'm just like I don't. Fuck it. I don't. I don't know any. You talk about pop music and all that stuff. I just don't know because I don't listen to. I listen to fucking decapitated CDs like every day on repeat. So <laughs> Justin it's like, Bieber in his closet. So I've got fucking <laughs> every year. I was buying Justin Bieber wrapping paper and wrapping all my Christmas gifts with it, and that's a big step up for me because before that I was wrapping everything in newspaper. Um, <laughs> but every like I'd hand over, you know, like, here's a Christmas thinking. gift. People are like, what the fuck? <laughs> Justin Bieber wrapping paper it's and perfect. it pissed me off that this year I can't find there's a fuck the market is dry with Justin Bieber wrapping paper I should have stocked up when I had the Wait, chance so you use that much wrapping paper you don't have any left over I mean when you buy from the dollar store oh, mind you, it's a dollar so it doesn't give you like you know those okay. huge fu- well, like, yeah. those let me let me put it rolls, this way. you know what I mean when you're buying like for those of you who couldn't see what just happened <laughs> you know <laughs> he motioned like he was just talking about Pleasing huge, huge rolls of wrapping paper <laughs> in his hands. Right into his mouth. Into his oh mouth. My God. And around his mouth. You know, I don't so know. from the dollar store, it's like, oh, hey, sweet. But it's it's in moderation that they give it to you. So, okay. mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I've used it all and I actually end up selling one of the rolls of uh, uh, Justin Bieber, the extra one that I had to my um, my sister's fiance. Which ended up, I just gave it to him. I'm like, no, you really want this? Like, that'll make your day. Here, you can have the sexual role of Justin Bieber. I just think paper. you could have had it for this year if you hadn't given it Fuck. to him. Uh, he well, probably, I didn't, he I didn't probably wrapped was, your gift in it this year. I didn't think it was ah. something that was going to go out of style. I thought it was like, this is going to be my life. This is how the world is now. This is just how the world is. Every year, there will be ample amounts it. of Justin Bieber <laughs> wrapping paper. <laughs> oh. You just need Fuck. to find a new thing. You now. heard it from a metalhead. Yeah. Justin Bieber wrapping paper. I mean, people. Thing I mean, do. people hate him. Mm-hmm. I personally, I don't really, I don't listen, so I don't really know. I just know people really hate him, <laughs> so it made it just that much better that people got presents in Justin Bieber wrapping paper. Okay, yeah. so give us give us an up and coming band that we might not be familiar with um, in the metal scene that you have been listening to a lot of. The Survivalist. Survivalist. Back to the band. Hmm. Back to metal. Not baby metal. Uh, up and comer. Like, up and coming. Like local or. It could be either major. or. I feel like Like Mazda Flames does not get enough attention. Those guys are on Rise Records and. Have you heard the new album? Yes. Yes. Love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Fantastic. Big fan of those guys. Um, yeah, they're awesome. They're going on tour soon in January. They took a break. You got kind of a, a cool story about uh, meeting with singer. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Well, yeah. Do tell. So they played a show back in October. They were on tour with All That Remains. Oh, my God. And We Came As Romans. Yes. <laughs> I like one of their songs. Who? We Came All As Romans? Oh, yeah? Okay. I couldn't tell you what it was, but I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, they're, they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so those guys were on tour, and they, they played a show in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I went out to see them, and I, was, uh, I got to hang out with the lead singer from Like Mazda Flames. His name is Chris. And uh, Oh, cherries and berries. Bad day for that dude. It was the popos, <laughs> the policia, and uh, so yeah, I got to hang out and talk with him, and he's a really cool dude, and uh, he helped us design a new T-shirt that we're what? making right now. Yeah, so he he did the design for it, and it's all him, and uh, yeah, cool guy. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, 
Yeah. Nice. So when when is the shirt going to be released for sale? So we got it designed and everything right now. Um, hopefully soon. Probably in the springtime. We'll go with spring. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be just be a package, CDs, shirts, everything all at the same time ish. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Boo. yeah. yeah. Can do that. <laughs> Light so bulb. As of right now, where can people find you and buy your merch and everything that is the survivalist? Yeah. Right now we're on Bandcamp. So you go to survivalist music dot bandcamp dot com and uh, you pick up our merch there and you can download the destination EP for free. Nice. And we still have one more track to play off of that. You EP. know what? Before we go to that, okay. let's do the unsigned band pick. Okay, we can do that. I like cool. to keep the we have one more track from you guys. I like to keep it a little bit towards the end and we can listen a little bit closer to the end of the show. Kind of spread it out a little bit. Okay. Mm. So mm. let me go ahead and do that. Rock and roll. Now it's time for... Hey man, look what I found! Only on the Metal Experience. Woo! All right, so this week we have all the way from Montevideo? Montevideo? Don't question it, just say it. Slash Maldonado, Uruguay. Fucking Uruguay, that's so badass. The band Days of the Phoenix. We got a twofer for you tonight. The songs Remember the Fifth and Heroes of Chaos semicolon the killing joke both those songs are on their album our fire let's check it out Oh, no. 
To the metal experience. Did you say hookers and blow? <laughs> no, I said the metal experience. That, 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 that's not nearly as good. You gotta, you gotta do the thing. All right. Woo! She, Morgan, see, Morgan doesn't do the countdown like she should, like uh, Wayne's World. She doesn't do the Wayne's World. And Maybe. Right maybe I should maybe I should show her that movie and then she'll know what I'm I talking know about. what Wayne's World is. Thank you. You don't do it. <laughs> Wayne's World. Well, we just heard Days of the Phoenix from they're from a couple places in Uruguay, Montevideo. If Why are you questioning this every time? Yes, it's Montevideo. That's just I've never. That's have you ever heard of that? Why would you hear of it? <laughs> I don't know. This is crazy. Oh, that's just down the street. My buddy then, Maldonado <laughs> lives there. Yeah, right? my, my Mal- buddy Maldonado. And Maldonado, uh, Uruguay. Uh, we heard two songs from them. Remember the fifth and Heroes of Chaos. Uh, semicolon, the killing joke, and both of those songs are available off their album Our Fire. Yeah. I am Luco Blaze with Morgan Danielle. Morgan is also doing the soundboard. She's pretty much just it's taking it job. over. Yeah. Um, She's doing a pretty good job. Morgan hey, used to sit job, right Morgan. here, and we used to have a sound guy. We <laughs> actually have four sound guys. We have four sound guys. Oh. Oh, okay. None of them show up. It's just Morgan. <laughs> it's just me and Morgan. It's the metal experience. We're just fucking killing things. Killing Fire it. them. And uh, so we're we're on tonight with the survivalists still talking about uh, you know all sorts of crazy stuff fantasy football sports heavy metal baby metal little children metal horror Britney movies. Spears horror movies and sync it, it's gone we've talked about some crazy stuff tonight mm-hmm. I've liked it Bieber wrapping paper Bieber Justin Bieber wrapping hey, tis paper tis the season tis the season to be in two days Bieber, it'll be Christmas know. two days it'll be Christmas alcoholic eggnog is a total thing. What's happening? Christmas totally is in happening. two days? 
two and a half. Holy shit. I'm excited. It's just so weird because there's no fucking snow on the ground. So it's like, it doesn't seem like. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. We ain't, ain't going to see anything global light warming, on right? Christmas. Yeah, it's all That's that global warming. <laughs> For the first time that we're actually, it's actually real. feeling it's it. happening. Because last year it was like negative 20. It was horrible. It was horrible. Yeah. Snowpocalypse. Yeah, a couple years back. That was well, ridiculous. Oh, last year yeah. was, uh, it was still warm in December. I think it was January where it hit those. Yeah, it hit oh, those yeah. 20. What was it? Oh, what, what do they call it? Jeez. The Arctic something. Oh, yes. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, it was a new uh, term. They, it's like every year yeah. they have a new term for why yeah, it's like, cold. Yeah, like what? Yeah. Snowpocalypse. Like, it was like the, uh, what was it? It Arctic? was like, it's the Arctic butthole. And it's coming down from the north. And it doesn't like you because it's Canadian. And it was, it's like. It was record so, lows, though. It was all record was lows. Bad. Every year, there's a new something. You know, we had snowpocalypse. Last year, we had the Arctic something it was so cold it failed me, it failed me. <laughs> or was it like a polar polar the polar that vortex polar, polar vortex. vortex oh there it is what yeah it's like Nuts. where do they keep that where do the they keep term there's like some guy on a computer polar in the back vortex. that's just like pushing up his glasses they're like give us a new term <laughs> polar vortex and polar he's like that vortex. sounds good and he they just throw out a new term at us leave me alone i'm masturbating polar vortex okay mom shut up Zero to a hundred, hey, real oh. quick. There, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. <laughs> Party on, Garth. That's how so I go. So we still haven't heard these impressions that. Oh God. You bragged about this whole. Wait, time. you bragged about some impressions? I, mean, when eh, I mildly m- brought it up. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, back in the day, before doing music and stuff like that. I used to do like improv comedy and stuff like that. What? Give yeah. us some of your stuff. Oh, shit. Give me a whole 30 minute set list right now. Go. I'm just going to put you on blast real yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah. Fill up the remainder of our time, Justin. Fill <laughs> up <laughs> the remainder of our time? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, I, I, I say I used to, well, I used to freak out family members and hide in their uh, closets and do Smeagol. What? I would, <laughs> I would just like, I would like, I, w- I would wait until my sister got Upstairs, I'd like hide in her closet. She'd like be in her bed. Lights go off. And That's just, not weird. Or anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm an asshole, <laughs> oh, big to brother. A bad start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just a little creepy. Uh, so yeah. So I would, I would wait for it to get really quiet, and then I would just start talking like Smeagol, and I'm like, <laughs> Smeagol, <laughs> right, right, Smeagol. And she'd be like, sit there, you're like. Justin, I fucking hate you. <laughs> Get out of this room. I don't want to talk to you. Get out of here. I'm like, <laughs> and I just sit there and I talk to her for like half an hour oh my until God. she would get so mad that she would just hit me because, you know, that's when you know you won. And so you just go <laughs> home and you just go home, go back to your room and you're like, yes, I got under his skin. Victory is mine. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, I used to do Smeagol a lot and just like, it burns us. And you just sit there and you do that. <laughs> uh, I've been trying to figure out how to do Trump, and for the life of me, I cannot figure out. It's like I don't know. Jimmy Fallon does him really well. He does mm-hmm. him so well. Yeah. Uh, so you, there's obviously a trick I, yeah. that you mentioned as to how to make your voice sound like somebody else's. What you are we missing? Out, you just got to figure out a quirk. Yeah, like Frank Caliendo described that perfectly. Yeah, it's like everybody has their trends. Yeah, everybody has like certain. Mo- it can be a motion. It can be a way their lips move. You pick up on one thing that they do, and it helps you so much in trying to figure out mm-hmm. one little wor- quirk or word or something like that. Um, like uh, Bill Clinton, like he always has that like <laughs> hushed, silent thing. He's like, uh, I'm Bill Clinton, president of the United States. And you just sit there and you <laughs> Whoa, just, was Bill Clinton here? Yeah, and you just do that whole thing. <laughs> Bill Clinton, good. everybody. Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know what she was doing, but I liked it. And just, and you, it's like a soft, like, <laughs> can you Alabama. define the word? Yeah, yeah. it's just, it's heli- it, like, you just do that and eventually you just start to get it. Also being grounded a lot as a kid. <laughs> Not helps out. Yourself. Get out of your sister's bedroom. They're <laughs> grounded. Uh, immensely. Being grounded helped out so much for <laughs> learning how to do voices. So do oh you do these goodness. on stage when you perform at all? Oh, no. Not really. I mean, mostly the most that you'll ever get on stage is someone yelling, take off your shirt. Or like someone asshole will just sit there and say, Freebird. Freebird. The most unoriginal thing. Every show. Every show. What would you want them to cheer? 
I don't know. I mean, like one of our songs. <laughs> if they, if yeah, they really sweet. truly do listen to us. Yeah, it's totally one of our songs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, somebody always says Freebird. I, I yelled like Freebird at a Cannibal Corpse show, and like three <laughs> songs later, Corpse Garden was like, this goes out to that fucking guy that yelled Freebird. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve to die! And then we also <laughs> got, like, oh, hey, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of cool. I, th- I was kind of like, whoa, that's me! Yeah. And then I was kind of like, whoa, not cool! <laughs> like, but it was still pretty fucking awesome. It's as buzz bad as a time as you got yelled at by Des from Devil Driver for yelling ridiculous things when they were playing with Demo. Oh. I didn't get yelled at. You at. got yelled what at. He, he kept on. Listen, I'm not a big Devil Driver fan. You know what? Are everyone still likes. Around? Everyone likes yeah. their own. Okay. You know, whatever. Cool. And I just don't like Devil Driver. All right. You know, I know a lot of people like them. I just don't. So I was just like, I'm with you on like, that one. The songs about sometimes when people are lost and they're. Not always lost or something. He's just like going on. Like I'm like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he ever said anything. Did he say something back? I don't remember. I just remember screaming, shut the fuck up to him. But you know what? Listen, hey, you're up on that stage, man. Do your thing. You're. Oh yeah. He's obviously cooler than I am. So you're a heckler. I'm a little. You know. He not does often, a lot. But <laughs> no. He will. Yeah. No. Yeah. Time More to put at you sporting on events, if but you he will at concerts. Sporting events, yes, because yes. deservedly so. These men are, these the athletes game. are making more most of the time in one game than I'm making in a whole fucking year. So, yeah, I will fucking speak my mind Easily. at a fucking, at a, at a sporting event. Yeah, that's, don't get me started on that. <laughs> How did you not catch that? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what, let me, little, little thing, uh, those fucking gloves that those NFL players have you ever you ever tried those on? You yeah. ever tried those? Yeah. You could fucking catch anything you wanted one handed. Yeah. It's the most insane thing ever. And then you see fucking professional and the shit's hitting them in the hands and they drop it. Yeah. How do you do that? Like well, there's there a lot was, of factors there. There I was mean, a video. There was a video of uh just recently, uh, one of my buddies on Facebook, and Facebook, I fucking hate Facebook, but <laughs> One of them. Find Luca Blaze on Facebook and add him as your uh, friend. This guy, he's like 50 year old news reporter. He goes around, he's talking about these new gloves. Like, is this changing football? And this guy, mind you, like, he's like 50, 60 year old, 50, 60 year old. And he's going around with these gloves, and this guy's making these fucking crazy one handed catches. Like, who is this guy? It's just, uh, those, yeah. So when I see professional athletes, you know, this isn't back in the early, you know, the 90s, the, you know, 80s and, and be- before. Catching all that shit barehanded, no gloves, nothing. Now these guys have those fucking crazy gloves, and I've worn them because I had a buddy that had them, and I was like, oh, let me try these things on. They're fucking <laughs> one-handed catches through my legs, behind my head. Like, it's stupid. And yeah. then these are fucking, I, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> now would be a good time to listen to another song. All right. All right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> let me, let me, Music. Let me calm down. <sighs> All right, so the Survivalist off the Dest- uh, Destination EP. We got one more track off that. What uh, What's that bad boy called? It's Avalanche. Called Avalanche. Yeah. Avalanche. Don't even get me started on the Colorado Avalanche. Avalanche. <laughs> Avalanche. 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 It's French. Foreshadow? It's French. Maybe it's a soft A. Yeah. It's Avalanche. Simeon Varlamov, that oh, wow. son of a bitch. Here's Avalanche. Avalanche. <laughs>
Hey guys, we're coming to rest. Hey, what's up? We're coming to rest. <laughs> <laughs> we got a new album that's out right now. It's called Blacklist. Make sure to check it out. You are now listening to The Metal Experience. Bang! And we just heard Avalanche by the Survivalists. Sucker. I am Luco Blaze with Morgan Danielle. We're hanging out with the Survivalists still. We're playing that track off their Destination EP, and we are broadcasting from what's it's the address the here? Keys. What's the address? One Twelve York Road. Really? It's called York Street. You know that? I Shit, I don't know where we're at. Pretty we're sure Elfers. it's One Twelve. That was One Nineteen. One Nineteen. Whoa. I'll what? see. Possibly one thirteen, one of those numbers, and right around one one in front of it. Right around there, you'll find it. And uh, we're broadcasting in the back room, drinking some beers, eating some food. One nineteen North York Again, Road. Rocking out, go. Morgan. This is our this is our Christmas episode. Morgan's Christmas wearing her episode. Christmas hat. It's, it's the only time of year I can wear it. Blackhawks Christmas. Obviously, it's not doing us any good right now. No, you should probably take it off. I can't. It's too comfy on my head. Really that is a good reason to You're wear a hat. Jinxing us! You can only wear one Blackhawks paraphernalia mm. item at a time. That's, that's not true. That's that's not true. It is with me. I can only wear one at a time. Well, that's not how it goes for me. But anyway, I don't know. You just kind of I don't know. It's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So what does the future hold? We got we got the new year coming up. We got Christmas coming up. You guys all done Christmas shopping? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, oh, yeah. Some knick-knack stuff or whatnot. Just some little some stocking ozenets. stuffer yeah. material we're looking for. But other than that, yeah, all wrapped yeah. up. Do you Ready exchange gifts as a band to each other? No. Nah. <laughs> I'm accepting that, that's, gifts. That's kind, of, <laughs> so that's kind of a give or take. <laughs> so Dan says nah, and Corey's like, oh. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, are we? Corey may have gotten gifts? for everybody. I mean, unless you already bought something, Corey. I, well, I mean, I did give you that set of strings a while ago. That's true. <laughs> we do we'll, like we'll to take a that. shower together. Oh, <laughs> that's not, as long as there's no. If we only have us. stashes and look like Borat, bathing suit. Do they have to be porn stashes Optional. though? I can't really grow a fierce stash like that. Just have the chops then. That's for months. <laughs> That's months of work. See, like my beard doesn't connect properly, but I can grow a stash. That's dedication. You see, right but there. I wake up and look this average, yeah. so I think I could pull this off. Your your beard grows in healthy. Like you could it, grow you could grow that motherfucker out. Like it all connects. If, it if I let it go, I would literally look like a wolf man. It would go up to my eyes, all the way down to my neck. Like okay, I should say down to my neck, through my neck to my chest. It would just be bad. Wolf man it, hybrid. Yeah, but it all connects. So yeah. it looks, and you know what, it's 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 short, but it's full. See, whereas mine's short, and sporadic, <laughs> but my mustache area grows in like a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you gotta work with the, with what you got. So, mm-hmm. 
True. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's what I do. Yeah. So the the mustache for our, for all the listeners, it's it's the playoff beard for the Blackhawks. It, ah. I would also grow a playoff beard for the the Bears if they ever made the playoffs, but they don't. <laughs> they don't. Big big if. So the playoff beard for the Blackhawks, and then once we either a get eliminated or win this, you know, go win Stanley Cup. I'll slowly start taking pieces of the beard off until <laughs> it's just the mustache, and I'll keep the mustache till uh, the night before the first preseason game. And that's just kind of my ritual. I've been doing that for the past. Damn, it's been a while. I haven't been doing that exact ritual, but I've been doing the beard for three years. No, like six. Wow. Well, I don't know. But the mustache I've been doing for like the last four. So. Man. There you go. Hey, that fucking mustache gets fucking. It gets outrageous. It gets <laughs> like every every bite of food that you take, my mustache also takes that bite of food. <laughs> Everything <laughs> I drink, that mustache is like, whoa, whoa. Let me get some of that, son. Yeah, you so got some leftovers for yeah. later. It's it's fucking it's dedication. Towards the end of it, you're like, God damn it, get off my face. But at the same time, you're like, you demand so much respect. <laughs> It's uh, it's tough. It's tough. But you know what? YOLO. <laughs> Hashtag YOLO swag. Hashtag YOLO swag. Son. Well, uh, again, where can everyone find everything that is the survivalist on the interwebs? Everything that all anything, anything that is the you guys that is the survivalist. Yeah. Check us out on Facebook. Um, you can find all of our links there. I think the link is facebook.com official survivalist. We're on Instagram and Twitter, and uh, we're on Bandcamp as well. So we go to Bandcamp, and you can download our Destination EP for free and check out our merch. We have stuff for sale right now. We're running a 10% off every all of our merch for the holidays, so for the rest of 2015. You guys. Yeah. Because we care. We're so nice. I saw that. The yeah. 10% off, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's tax for us. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. A little goes a long way. For sure. Exactly. Well, just to wrap up a little bit of this weekend, uh, we sponsored Heavy Holidays out at Quenchers with Rock in Chicago, Doc Metal, and Jeff's Tech. Uh, that's Jeff Teach. Jeff Teach. Thank you. Jeff Teach. It's his name. You don't know it? I thought it was oh, tech sorry. metal. <laughs> sorry. <You're>, it's <laughs> anyways. T E A C H. Oh, yeah. Anyway, well, it's we sponsored uh, Heavy Holidays, and it yeah, was man. fucking awesome. Uh, we did post one video. Everything must die. Made a couple new awesome songs. One of them is "Look at the Ash on That" um, mm. about um, hitting on dead corpses at funerals. No, it's about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Banging out <laughs> there a buddy's mom. mom who has died yep. and cremated yes. and banging Fucking out her ashes. Her urn. So, <laughs> yeah. No yeah. And, and then. It's called, yeah, look at the ash on that. And then the other one that I really liked that I can't figure out how to rotate correctly to look right when I upload it is smoke, weed, eat people. Smoke, weed, eat people. That's another... Everything Must Die has done it again. It's uh, it's <laughs> a little... Like lace with bath smoke salts or something? It's a, people. It's a little reggae. It's, it's a little it's grindcore. It's like Bob Marley meets it's grindcore. It's fucking awesome. That's yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, so they played... <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, Tonson played Warforged, and then we had... Um, help me out here. There was one more. Why am I forgetting? Impale. Impale. Duh. The Mighty Impale. The Mighty Impale. So all great. All did amazing as usual. So that was the last sponsor show of the year. That was Saturday night. Had a great audience. Great turnout. We got rid of a ton of shirts out of my trunk. We put a sticker on a this guy's dude's wheelchair. wheelchair. That was pretty awesome. He was like, yeah, man, because we gave him a, a, a free shirt. He An was Iron like, Maiden shirt. Yeah, he was really stoked. Dark. Solid. And he was like, throw one of your stickers on my wheelchair, Mike. Really? <laughs> right next to everything must die. All right, man. Sweet. It's pretty awesome. That's cool. Couldn't get a clear picture. Stupid so, Yeah, that's, that's my phone. It's a it's an iPhone 4. I got and it for a dollar. Luco played a show on Sunday at Big Shots in yeah. Valparaiso. How did that go? It went, Indiana? It went good. You don't want to talk about it? No, see, I don't like talking about my band. Come it's on. Just, this is about the survivalist tonight. 
It's not about. Give yourself a shout out real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. come on, man. What band so are you? I'm in this band called The Forms They Take. I didn't pick the name. If it was up to me, I would have picked Rusty Clearwater and the Buttermilk Mountain Top Boys. <laughs> I'm also copywriting that, so don't anyone take it <laughs> without written consent and approval from me. But I would totally be down to join a band if anyone You're wants so to retarded. start a band called Rusty Clearwater and Buttermilk, Buttermilk Mountain Top Boys. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the forms they take. Yeah, it is. That's I don't know. I'm strange. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we played a show. We opened up, which was also very strange because I've never opened up a show. But uh, we took a bunch of video, and we're gonna kind of make it into like a music video kind of DIY yeah. thing. And That's hopefully, cool. it turns out pretty cool. We got a bunch of different angles. Um, one of my buddies from a band I was in before. Uh, also took video and he's going to be helping us out with that endeavor and uh, hopefully it turns out cool we got another show coming out uh, coming up January 9th at that Penny, Road Pub. Penny Road Pub we're playing with Air Raid Air Raid what we're playing with some other bands I'm seriously I'm not the person to talk to about rap I'm not good at talking about stuff I do I don't know I just, just I just show up and wreck I, shit. I just show up and a poop and fart jokes and I, you know. Well, you're the vocalist, right? Yeah, that's all vocalists. <laughs> they just show up and do their thing, right? Hey, you know what? <laughs> but you'd I, do it too if you could. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know what? I'm fucking all in though. I fucking I'll help. I'll help our drummer move all of his shit. I'll help carry all there the you stuff. Go. Teamwork, right? You know. You're playing with What's Silence the? in the Wake and Surgeons and Air Raid. Nice. That should be a sweet show. I'm looking forward to checking out those other two bands. They I know just had Air another Raid band drop off that show seat. then. Because originally there was five bands. I think it was always they four. T- no, they lost another one. I think one. the whole entire lineup no, has been completely No, the evil ones changed. dropped. I think they dropped a long time ago. No, they were on it as of last week. Well, you know, this regardless. This got updated December 20th. That was three days ago. That's two days ago, but, you know, whatever. And then you're playing it. March 5th with Prison City Brigade, Makeshift Tragedy, F and Epic, The Unlawful, Dark Entropy, and two more bands to be announced. Wait, what did you just say? At the spot on Broadway, down south. When is this? March 5th. Shit. Yeah. See, he doesn't even know his own band. I don't know. It's in your phone. You got a smartphone. I don't know these things. No, he's got a smart girlfriend. Oh. This is a smartphone he can't figure out. <laughs> what you <laughs> smart girlfriend works listen, a smartphone. I listen to the same CD on repeat for months on end until she comes in my car and this changes it. I don't. I'm not good with technology. That's why this with pop music, true. people start naming off these people. I don't know any of this stuff. I live in my own little world. I fucking. Mm-hmm. I love decapitated, and I just hang out and I listen to decapitated. <laughs> on the regs. And life is good. And life is good. Life I'm is having good. a fucking blast. You guys have out any, tonight with you guys. Have any shout outs? Anybody back you know, home? Having a good time. And they're listening. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Shout Mom. out to Mooney, who will probably be hearing this tomorrow when it airs. All right, that's our drummer, Ryan. Mooney. Hi, Ryan. Mooney. Mooney. Shout, out, shout out to my dad and my sister who. Just listen to us fucking practice all the fucking time. <laughs> I yeah. know how that is. Yeah, thanks, Pops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, down in the sure. basement. Uh-huh. Basement practice sessions. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm. CP's nice. brutal basement. And uh, shout out to, uh, like, Woe to the Earth, The Levitated, and, and Escapist. Escapist, who all, all those guys. <laughs> yeah. Good guys. Well, that's the last song that you guys want to actually go out with that you um, had requested. A few of the bands that you guys were friends with, we had played throughout the whole show. So we have one more song, and that is The Escapist with their song Total Moral Cleansing. But before that, one more time, where can everyone find everything that is Survivalist and your upcoming shows? Yeah, go to our Facebook page, Survivalist. Yeah, everything is there. There's links to our Twitter account. Instagram. Instagram. YouTube. Yeah, Bandcamp, you can download the music. Yeah. And you guys well, got free. some shows coming up too, right? Yeah, our next show is in February in West Dallas. Uh, the Just for Today Recovery Club in West Dallas, yeah, February 5th. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Morgan, what day of the week is that? What day? It's a Friday. No, wh- oh, I was, I was asking for the date it. again. No, it's okay. Morgan is crazy. You could be like, all right, what is... Oh, she knows? What's February 3rd? February 3rd this year? No, four years ago. All right, no, different one, because he just said February 5th. Um, what is uh, March 8th? March 8th is a Tuesday. 
What? How do you know that? Because you play March 5th at a show and that's a Saturday. Nice. Good memory. That's how you're supposed to do it. You have to get a date that you know for sure you have something planned on and go off of that. Damn, she is Yeah, good. but knowing the weekday, though, that's <laughs> is it a Tuesday? next level. It's yeah. a Tuesday because of the Metal Experiences book that day. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, June 30th. June 30th is... <laughs> Hold on, guys. Give me a second here. I'm trying to think of how many days are in June. There's I don't 30. You get a countdown? So you have a time no, 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 no. I got this. So, it's a Thursday. Is June That's 30th true. a Thursday? It's true. Yeah, what? because July what? 4th is a Monday and I get it off work. Boom, baby. It's also true. <laughs> I don't even know what day today is. How do you know what that Today's is? It's December 22nd, 2015. I don't even know why I am half the time. How do you know these things? Fits his for keys and numbers every Tuesday night. Come out for the metal experience. This is <laughs> fucking <laughs> crazy. It's on the rugs, crazy. yo. Yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to go out at the end of the night listening to The Escapist with their song, Total Moral Cleansing. Check out The Survivalist on Facebook. They will be tagged in our upcoming posts as well as on our website themetalexperience.com you can go under past guests find a little profile that we'll set up for them with all the links to find the band as well as all of our past guests and the hey look what i found picks are all up there as well as all of our upcoming guests which next week we have on our friends in rock in chicago as we've been guests on their show this year that we're going to have eric out a couple of times yep uh jack we're hoping from Dak metal will come out as well as jeff uh, comes out with him, and then we'll have Chicago Metal Alliance here, Corey Rocks. It'll just be one big party to wrap up 2015. And then the first show of 2016, as it's been for the past Mechina. three years, Mechina is going to be joining us with their brand new album, which releases January 1st. And then also check out Days of the Phoenix from Uruguay. They were the unsigned uh, band pick of the week. But uh, thank you again, the survivalist. Uh, Dan, Justin, and Corey for coming out. Uh, that's a fucking haul. I know it's a fucking haul on a Tuesday night. You guys got work in the morning or work tomorrow or work even tonight. And we appreciate uh, all the bands and everyone that always comes out to the show and especially with those long commutes. And thank you guys again for coming out. Yeah, it's hey, been a blast. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, yeah, it was having totally us. worth it, dude. Thank you. Woo. Happy Good holidays. Night. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And what's the song we're playing? The Escapist Song. And they're from where again? Uh, Waukegan, Waukegan, Illinois. They are from Waukegan, and the song is Total Mortal Cleansing. Let's do it. Good night. <laughs>